Hello friends! Setting the right camera view is really important for the staging of an animation. Set it wrong and you might not get the view you expected. So today I'm going to show how you can adjust your camera to get a better view and how to animate it to follow the action. So last week I shared my first YouTube short which is an animation that I originally made in this horizontal format. But I changed it to fit in the short vertical format by animating the camera here in OpenTunes. And I wanted to do something similar for my Instagram account. So I thought this would be a good time to show how to animate the camera. And for those already following me on Instagram, you'll have already seen the result of this. And for everyone else, you can find a link to my Instagram and other socials down in the description below. So, reading round, it seems the best aspect ratio to share videos is four to five. That's four units wide by five tall. And my original screen size here is HD, so that's 1920 by 1080. And I want to keep the full height of this animation, so it's just the width I'll change. So the first thing to do is to change the camera size from the egg sheet menus, camera settings command. And then you'll see this dialog. And if you make sure the right hand side padlock is locked, then the height of 1080 won't change. And we'll change the width here from 1920 to 864. And then press the pixel selector. And you may have noticed that the camera outline, which is this red dotted box, has shrunk immediately. So let's close this dialog. And now if you press the camera view button at the top right of the viewer, you'll get to see exactly what the camera will see. So straight away, we can see that we can't even see the monster on frame one. So let's turn off the camera view while we set it up by clicking the standard camera stand view. So to adjust the position of the camera, we need to be selected in the appropriate frame of the camera column on the timeline or on the X sheet, and then select the animate tool. Be sure that the camera column is selected in the first drop down, and then choose position from the second drop down, and then drag the camera to the new position by clicking and dragging on screen. And straight away, you'll notice a key appear on the timeline. But we can drag the camera anywhere, both horizontally and vertically. But for this animation, we only want to drag it horizontally. So we can lock the Y value by clicking the padlock next to the Y setting. And now we can only drag it left and right. So let's delete the old key by clicking on it on the timeline. And you see it highlight in blue, and then just press the delete key. And the camera goes back to its original position. So let's place the camera on the left over the monster. And showing the camera view will show how my new view will be rendered. That's fine. And if you wanted to, you can scale down the camera to zoom in a little bit. But if you want that, I'd strongly recommend turning off the camera view first before you make any further adjustments. So for that, from the second drop down, choose the scale option, and then click and drag to scale up and down from the center position. And then reposition your new scaled camera. And that's it. You can render out your new animation with this new staging. But if I play the animation, you'll see that the monster runs to the side, so I need to animate the camera. But first, let's just delete the key we've added to reset the camera. And now the camera goes back to the center again. So before we start any animating, we want to decide the interpolation type. And you do this from the Preferences dialog in the File menu. Just go to the Animation section, and at the top here, choose the default interpolation. And what is this? Well, the interpolation is the pacing of the movement. And I'll cover this in more detail in another video, but a sensible default for a camera move is the speed in and speed out option. And it's best to choose this before adding any animation keys. So let's close that. So as we did before, let's set the first position of frame one. So with frame one chosen in the camera column, let's choose the animate tool, Check that the camera is set in the first drop down. Choose position from the second drop down. And with the Y value locked, drag the camera box to the left of the screen. And let's check it with the camera view. So I think we can scale this a little bit to make the monster look a little bit bigger. So choosing the scale option again, I'll click and drag down to zoom in slightly and change the position back to the left and down a little bit. OK, and I want the camera to stay here for a few frames until the monster moves. So let's find out where that is. So either play the animation 
or click and drag on the scrubber bar below the viewer to find the frame where you want to start the movement. And I think we want the camera to start moving around frame 52 to follow the monster. So let's go to the frame before, frame 51, and let's add a duplicate key on frame 51. And we do this by pressing the key button at the bottom of the viewer, and that's the diamond shaped button here. And you see that adds a key to frame 51. And by not changing any values between frame 1 and frame 51, the camera won't move. And then from frame 52, we want the camera to pan across the scene. So let's see where we want the camera to stop. So scrubbing through the animation, we can see that the monster runs and then stops ready for jumping. So we want to have the camera stopped at this position, so around frame 66. So let's add a key there. With the Y value locked with the padlock, we can just click and drag on frame 66 to move the camera to the right. And by scrubbing through, we can see that the camera doesn't hit the right spot soon enough, so we can simply move the key to be sooner. So select the key and click and drag to the left. And now if we scrub through, we can see the camera gets to that point a little bit sooner. But he still falls out of the camera view here on frame 57. So if we move this key to hit that spot even sooner, the camera will go a little bit quicker and the monster stays in the shot. So we need a second camera move to go from the squashed monster through to when he lands in the water. So here's the final animation with the adjustment of those keys added. And that's it. That's all you need to do to set and move the camera. And there's more ways to adjust the pacing of the camera and more adjustments you can make to both the camera and to adjust the timing of your movement. But that's probably best left for another time. And one last thing, if you found this video useful, I'd love it if you give it a thumbs up so it can spread to other users. And do let me know in the comments if you've tried animating with a camera before, or if this is your first time, let me know how you got on. And if you want more ideas for animating the camera, check out this next. And now see you next time for another video. And that's a Darren T.